Hey guys, welcome to uh, another round of great refreshing chats. Uh, I'm very pleased to see you guys. And uh, based on everybody asking me to pin certain things on the chats, I'm doing that now, I think. Okay, well, no, it didn't do it. So let me just jump right in. Um, so our first guest today, um, if this is new for you, by the way, welcome to Refresh by KF on my page. Uh, Refresh by KF is um, my lifestyle platform. Uh, and uh, the jump off, the core of this platform is um, health and wellness uh, and celebrating and diving into all things health and wellness through um, lifestyle, through um, the sciences, through um, travel and music and food and, 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 and self-care and just just all things to, to refresh yourself. That way you can refresh others. Uh, so um, before we jump in, and Corey, I, I see you. I will, I will uh, get right to you. Our first guest is just so great. I'm such a fan of his. Um, but um, just didn't uh, struggling with a little bit of, um, of news that uh, I got today right before coming on here. Uh, that an old family friend, old wonderful soul, uh, Regis Philbin, um, passed away. Um, and so I just wanted to take just a, a moment of, of silence, if you will, um, because he was a tremendous force and a long standing member of the media community. Uh, Oh my gosh, probably since the television started, he started so young in the industry. Uh, and I will definitely be doing a tribute to him. He was a friend since I was a little kid. Uh, for all of you in Los Angeles in this area, you'll remember one of Regis's early shows was AMLA out here in Los Angeles. And uh, he would always, um, he and his co host would always have me on. Um, when I was doing Facts of Life, and, and he was always so proud of me um, with, uh, with my work and going to school and going to college and, and just everything. And he was just always such a fan and a supporter uh, over my career. Uh, and so I just, uh, just taking a moment to honor Regis Philbin. All right, <clears throat> talk about soaring. So um, on Refresh, uh, our theme this month has been soaring. And you'll remember that last week we had the incomparable <laughs> Miss uh, Yvette Nicole Brown on. And um, the reason why we I selected soaring this month is because Yvette and I were on a phone call one day as we always are some, most days. And so uh, we were talking and... Um, uh, she asked, she said, well, how, how's your heart? And I said, you know what, girl, right now I'm soaring. I, I am soaring. The fuel that I get, I'm, I'm soaring. And she says, well, ain't nothing like a good soar. <laughs> I was like, okay. Um, and so I chose that because, you know, there's so much that, that can come with soaring. There's um, freedom. There's liberation. There's taking flight. There is... Um, as we learned last week from our, our in-house, our resident uh, uh, budding scientist, Sebastian. Yes, <laughs> see the blushing? That's because that's a proud mom blush. Uh, our budding scientist, Sebastian, who shared with us the science of soaring. Uh, and we learned about takeoff and flight and, and, and when you're soaring and gliding and then doing the work of flapping your wings and all kinds of good stuff. And so we're continuing this month with that, uh, with someone I'm a fan of his. I'm about to bring him into the building. Uh, and uh, I, I, well, when he gets in, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you uh, how we met. Hi. Hey, Kim. How are you? I'm good. It's great to be here with you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. So everybody, let us please welcome into the refreshing chat room, Mr. Corey Mascara. Woo! Hey, everyone. Uh, so Corey, I am a fan of his. I, I kind of um, stumbled across Corey's platform and his brand and everything uh, through Asana Rebel. 
mm. the uh, yoga uh, platform and the wellness platform. You guys know that I, I tend to post a, a number of times when I complete uh, a yoga workout or a meditation workout or anything like that. Uh, and so I had been having, um, sometimes I have trouble sleeping, whether it's falling asleep, whether it's um, staying asleep. Uh, and so, um, and I know a lot of you, when we were doing men's health chats last month, a number of you asked about, you know, can we touch upon um, sleeping and sleep habits and, and just your mind and, and shutting down and all of that. So we heard you asked and it shall be given unto you. Um, but what happened was, again, I was having difficulty sleeping and shutting my mind off. Uh, and even my usual go-to, Corey, which is reading. Uh, I have the you know reading app on my phone, and so I read a lot to just kind of escape and not think about my world and just kind of go to sleep. Um, and uh, so on Asana Rebel, they've got not just yoga workouts, but they've got wonderful meditations and things. And so it said, you know, sleep. And I was like, oh, well, let me check this out. And then you click on and Corey walks you through these different meditations and things on sleeping, on going to sleep. And it was just, somebody said, I use ice cream for medicinal purposes. <laughs> <laughs> I That's wish true. that was medicine. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, Corey, welcome, welcome, welcome. So Corey's wonderful uh, voice and then um, just just what he does as a coach as a mindfulness coach and teacher I mean he just walks you through and there's different um, 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 what, what do you call offerings there's different um, yeah, practices practices yeah. yes uh, and so Corey's background very quickly uh, Corey was uh, a monk correct yeah For two years no, no, that's a long time. I, it was a okay. it was a six and a half month um, silent meditation retreat, uh, and so ordained as a monk during that time. Shaved my head and wore robes. Wow, wow, wow. Well, welcome to Refresh. Thank you for being here. Um, so, how how did the the kind of combination for you to get uh, with Asana Rebel uh, in order to be? A, it feels like you're kind of a, a contributor. Mm. Um, yeah. To, yes. So they, I mean, they they started out primarily as a, a yoga app. I mean, that's primarily what they are. And mm -hmm. I think these days, uh, there, there's always been a little bit more of an emphasis on the body when it comes to mental and physical health, right? There's a gym on every street corner. Yoga <laughs> became more mainstream, which was great. Um, and there's a lot of mind training and heart training and mind settling woven into the fabric of yoga, the practice of mm -hmm. yoga. And, and yet there is something about stillness, meditative stillness, that um, is like another level of, of training the mind. And so Asana Rebel uh, was looking to expand their, their offering. Um, mm -hmm. And so I contribute the, uh, the meditations on there. Yes, yes, yes. So now when you are doing your meditations or your your practices, uh, and guys, I'm sorry if it's loud where I am. The gardeners, of course, showed up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I had this grand plan, Corey, of being outside with flowers and the waterfall and all that. And the gardener was just like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Get inside, lady. <laughs> um, but when you are doing these um, practices, what do you find... Um, well, first of all, let me back up. What do you find is kind of the, the things that, that people are struggling with most? And especially, you know, right now in, in quarantine, this whole set of uh, conversations that we've been having with my, my brand, Refresh, mm -hmm. has been a lot um, of focus. Of, we've, we've placed a lot of it uh, this month on soaring through uncertainty, yeah. you know. And even when people feel like they are, um, they, they've gotten their foundation, their footing, you know, um, it still feels uncertain. You don't know when quarantine will be over. You don't know if there's a second wave. You don't know when you're going to be back at work in a building. You don't know, yeah. you know, and, and all these things. And so and so we wanted to to talk about that because I'm, I'm a huge proponent of, of, of getting your mind right yeah. and keeping your mind uh, in a place that is 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 active, but even like I love what you posted the other day, brother, about um, just 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 stare. It's okay yeah. to let your mind do nothing. So so, what do you find is is kind of what we're 
what we're dealing with and what we're struggling with and then how do we work through that yeah good, great question um so the big thing that i i've seen over the course of my my time teaching and then especially right now is um you know that so there's a distinction between what we could call primary pain and secondary pain and i'll, I'll share a story that illustrates that uh, when when I was in Burma practicing, we were we were meditating about 14 hours a day um, in silence, very austere schedule. Some would view that as a vacation, and in some sense, it was a vacation. There weren't screaming children, or um, uh, you know, the, you're in a monastery; it's beautiful. But practicing that intensely on very thin mattresses, sleeping only a few hours per night, uh, creates a lot of physical pain. And what I noticed for myself is that when I would sit and meditate. Um, there'd be the physical pain that was inevitable as long as I was going to be there. But there was a second level of pain. And that was the, the thoughts about, I can't do this. I need to leave. I have to get out of here. What's wrong with my body? Why am I experiencing so, so much pain? And those thoughts would then trigger these emotions, anger, fear, loneliness, doubt, frustration. And then those emotions would make the physical pain worse. So there was this insidious mental loop where there, there was a pain, but then I was caking on this other pain uh, in addition to it. And I think that's a lot of what we see as, as human beings, where being human means there's going to be some level of pain. Some of us will experience more in our lifetime than others. Um, but being human does mean that that's gonna come. What, what we often do though, is we cake another level of pain on top of it. Uh -huh. And this is the secondary pain. This, these are the thoughts of why me? Why did God do this to me? How am I gonna be able to go on? How long is this going to last? Uh -huh. And what the research shows around this is that that, that mental and emotional pain ends up uh, being more of a form of suffering than sometimes the, the primary pain yes. itself. Yes. And it's not to say that we need to now just like get rid of the secondary pain and, and be extremely positive and sugarcoat everything and pretend like, you know, mm -hmm. life is rainbows and unicorns. Mm -hmm. But there's a huge amount of healing um, and soaring that can happen just by giving yourself the space to feel the primary pain of what you're feeling. Right. And, and that, from, so giving yourself permission. That's it. That's it. And, and what you just did with your body there was beautiful. Like there was like a... Uh, I, I think we can feel that the, sometimes there's a lot of pressure to show up a certain way, yes. to be on our game all the time. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes, like this is what the post was pointing to the other day, sometimes we just need to stare out a window and do nothing and not even try to meditate, but just, just right. simply be and give our nervous system the chance to process and integrate the unending chaos of our life. Yes. Yes. Ooh, I'm so glad you're here, Corey. <laughs> Me too, Kim. <laughs> um, so that being said, because I think that gives us all that 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 um, that permission to give ourselves permission, you mm -hmm. know. Yes. Um, and 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 to be authentic with where you are, to be able to say, you know what, this sucks right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not feeling this right now. Um, mm -hmm. Like right before we came on. I had a massive headache. I mean, my head is screaming right now and the pressure and all that. And um, I, I also have sinus troubles. And mm. so, you know, then that gets compounded with it too. And I thought, you know what? I think a lot of people are gonna really get something from this conversation because everything in me wants to scream out, I have to reschedule, I can't do this. I don't feel like it. I certainly didn't wanna show up I wanted to be a little cuter for y'all today, but this was it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you look great, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, but but so so giving yourself permission, it, it does have a, a, a very freeing and liberating element to it. Yeah. What, what, why, why is that? Yeah, it's the the pushing against what is present as, as it relates to an internal experience creates tension itself so any, you know there's something here and then we come in with our mind and we push against it i shouldn't be feeling sad i shouldn't be angry or god forbid we start meditating right. and now oh, oh i have to be peaceful all the time right, and we, right? And yeah. so where we can sometimes go wrong with this is sometimes we, you know, people think, okay, so now that I'm into mindfulness or I'm into meditation, I, I, I can't resist anything. I just have to allow life to be, 
that's not it. We're always going to need to be making changes in the world. That's how we evolve. That's how we, we grow. Mm -hmm. But the internal experience, yeah. and sometimes that internal experience is something that feels negative. That's already there. And, and resisting that, pretending like it shouldn't be there is like waking up in the morning and being angry that there's gravity pulling you toward the center of the earth, right? You could, you could jump up and down, you could stomp, but what's that going to do? It's going to create right. more agitation in the body, more yeah. tension. Eventually we need to learn to, to walk with it. Right, right. So one of the things that, that meditation does is it, it allows us to meet our experience, our internal experience with a sense of compassion rather than, than constantly berating ourselves for having this thought or having this emotion. Or having... Man, you better say that again, <laughs> yeah. please. Oh my gosh, yeah. you said don't meet, say, say it again, I don't wanna mess it up. Yeah, one of the things that meditation helps us do is, is meet our experience with a quality of friendliness rather than berating ourselves into submission right. and further pain. Yes, meet it with compassion. So giving yourself permission to say, yeah. you know what? This is okay for me to feel this way. You guys might remember early on in the quarantine, and I was, and I did this uh, a story, and I just, I, I had been, you know, just, just that roller coaster of emotions, mm -hmm. and it was an acknowledgement of, you know what? Sometimes my light isn't as bright as I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my light, for me, is is dim, mm -hmm. but it's still light. Yes. And, 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 and I think I, I didn't know what you just said. I know I didn't know what you just said, but mm. that idea of meeting your feelings with compassion instead of be, I beat myself up a lot. Shh, don't tell nobody. <laughs> That's a chink in my armor. Don't y'all mm -mm, don't put that out there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but meeting where you are with compassion. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and let's look at that, that element of our light for a second, because I think for a lot of us, and I know I had this for a long time as well, when we think of putting our light into the world or really embodying yeah. light, it, we, we tend to think of it as constantly being positive and constantly feeling good and just being the source of unending inspiration. But come on, come on, come what, on. What is more inspiring, at, at least to me, than somebody like, really giving themselves permission to be to embody the many dimensions of their humanness because what that does is it then gives someone else permission to embody the many dimensions of their humanness and we we are not the unendings or just like constantly um in this state that we might consider light to me like really embodying that quality of light is embodying a certain kind of authenticity and that means mm -hmm. meeting and and owning like the truth of what's here and then it gives everyone else permission to do that as well it's, it's yes absolutely oh my goodness this this <laughs> I, I i definitely hope everybody's getting something from this but mm. if not that's all right because right here is getting <laughs> something from this oh wow um yeah you just you just kind of blew the doors off for me with with mm -hmm. that you know because um i am humbled and i am grateful that people I have even said on on my on my my platforms that they they come looking for it's like my my platforms are a destination for you know light or feeling feeling better or feeling good and I'm grateful for all of that mm. but at the same time it's like you know it's okay when it's not like like you know a thousand watts yes right and that is, that's so powerful, I think, in particular, coming from someone like you, Kim, that has a big platform. And, and I think for, for someone with influence like you to say that, that it's okay to not be on your game every day or to feel off, it's just like another level of permission for people to, mm -hmm. to embody their experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so many of us are walking around hating ourselves and... And then what happens, we, we might have like anger toward ourselves and then we get angry for being angry at ourselves. It just compounds the suffering. So to, I want you to, to get, the, I want you to get the camera out of my house that you seem to have. <laughs> <laughs> this you just don't know my from, life, Corey. 
I know. When you see enough, you get into enough people's minds, these are the, the themes that come up. And mm -hmm. I think one simple thing that people could do is, you know, even once this is over, you could do it right now. But, you know, when you're having a difficult experience, just say to yourself, you're welcome here too. And so it's like you're talking to that experience. Let, let's say it's something like sadness or fear. Yes. You, you sort of treat that fear like it's a little child. And typically the tendency would be like, no fear. I, you know, I'm, I'm fearless. I, you yes, know, whatever. yes. <laughs> and instead we, we can like open our arms up and say, no, you're welcome here too. You're and welcome here too. What's what's interesting about that is we gain energy by not exerting so much energy trying to push it away. And there's a new kind of groundedness, embodiment, and and surprisingly fearlessness that comes when moving closer to fear. So and it's true with sadness, anxiety, stress. Yes, you know. yes, yes, yes. So yeah, yeah. Um um, one, okay, if you're just joining us, um, so this is my uh, lifestyle platform, Refreshed by KF. We're speaking with uh, the, the tremendous and, and wonderful, uh, mind, is it mindfulness teacher? Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Mindfulness teacher, uh, Corey Mascara. And uh, I came across this platform through uh, Asana Rebel, which was a yo it is a yoga platform, but then they also have um, so much great uh, uh, wellness and, and mindfulness and meditations and things like that. Now, listen, and, you know, real talk, y'all. In the black community, sometimes we all think, you know, meditation means, you know, some crazy religion or cult. And that's not what we're talking about, family. Let's mm -hmm. evolve, okay? When we're talking about meditation, and Corey, I would love for you to be able to speak into this as well but to to when we're talking about meditation it's really just kind of centering to just taking time first of all to just clear out all the noise mm -hmm. however you do that if you just you know sit down somewhere and breathe if you need to just go and sit in your car because you can't really go anywhere right now um, ain't nobody talking about, you know, lighting a whole bunch of stuff and, and you know, uh, whatever works for you works for you. And don't go <laughs> judging what works for other people. Sorry, I, got to, I got to get I got to get some things off my chest now. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 when we're talking about meditation and that sense of it's 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 an acknowledgement of to me, an acknowledgement of I just need a minute. I need a moment. Yeah. And being able to then get rid of all the noise and all the clutter and just just breathe, you know, mm. and and mm. but but on on your level, you know, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, what 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 is meditation? What is what is, you know, for people who are just like, um, I need to try I need to do something different. You know, pivot has been a very big word during the last few months and doing something different and, and, and making different choices and things like that. So for somebody who wanted to incorporate meditation or breathing or mindfulness into their um, self healing or, or self care space, mm. what, what would be some of your advice for that? Yeah. Well, you're, it's true that meditation has a bit of a PR problem, and we often associate it with, um, well, my association was Rafiki from The Lion King sitting in a tree, you know, cross-legged. And, uh, and so that's what I thought of, like, as wisdom. But right. we, can, we can think of meditation as a form of, of mental fitness. So mm -hmm. let's say we wanted to develop our bicep. We go to the gym, do bicep curls three times a week. Um, that over time is going to, the biceps going to get stronger, more functional, more developed. Why? Because the bicep curls, the exercise for the bicep. The meditation we could think of as the exercise for the mind. And so like in the most basic practice, let's say we're focusing on the breath. We, we're going to sit down for five minutes, just try and center our attention on the breath. So we feel the belly inhale, we feel it exhale. Now we're going to get like four seconds into that. And then the mind's going to go squirrel. It's going to think about something else. <laughs> right. <Squirrel>. And so... <laughs> So that's, that's the weight of the world, the weight of your yeah. mind pulling you away in the same way that the weight of the dumbbell pulls the arm down. And so what do we do? We pull it back. Mind wanders, we bring it back to the breath. 
Mm -hmm. And that coming back is like the bicep curl for the brain. And, mm -hmm. and what we see through the research is that that starts to retrain areas of the brain so that parts of the brain responsible for focus, um, uh, joy, empathy for other people, those areas start to grow. Mm -hmm. And then areas responsible for stress reactivity, rumination, um, these areas actually start to shrink in physical structure. So we are quite literally um, uh, growing areas of, of the brain mm -hmm. and shrinking other areas that are not serving us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so in terms of like the difference between mindfulness and meditation, uh -huh. we could think of mindfulness. Mindfulness is something that we could do right now as, as we're talking. It's this quality of being aware of, of what's actually happening as it's happening. Mm -hmm. And anyone listening right now, you know, you, you could check in where your mind is at. Do you have like your computer open as well? Are you looking out the window? Are you, uh, you know, simultaneously trying to do something else? Or are you actually here with Kim and me? Um, that quality of being more attuned to our life, I think, is a, a lost currency in our mm -hmm. society because we have mm -hmm. so many distractions. Yeah. And so the meditation is like the gym and mm -hmm. mindfulness is like your fitness level. And uh, so the meditation helps develop that quality of mindfulness more deeply. Um, but mindfulness is something we could do in, in any given moment. Mm. Okay. Okay. And, and for real quick, just for yeah. those that are like, well, okay, you gave me this little example. How do I actually do it? Yes. My suggestion would be, I mean, first you could check out Asana Rebel. That is a, a platform that will guide you through these meditations. Um, but I would also suggest just trying 100 breaths for 100 days. So what would that look like? Just sit down. If you could feel one breath, you know, close your eyes, feel inhale, feel the exhale, then count one. And then try and do two, then try and do three, try and do four. And you make your commitment to, to try to get to 100. That takes about 10 to 13 minutes to do. Um, and, uh, and you just commit to doing that for 100 days. If you did that, which is, you know, not a huge investment of time. Right, 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 right. You notice increased focus, joy, empathy, compassion, and right. a sense of groundedness. Yes, yes, yes. Guys, you may remember when Boris Kojo was on last month and we were talking about men's health and, and celebrating National Men's Health Month, uh, one of the points that he made was um, take baby steps, you know, when you're starting something new for yourself, whether it's in a fitness routine, uh, whether it's um, actual um, um, time for yourself, even if it's just when you get out of bed in the morning before you just get up and go just to take a minute. So I feel like that's very much so in line, Corey, with what you're saying in terms of here's something, here's a way to start. Here's a starting point. Yes. Uh, with these 100 breath and 100 days. That's fantastic. And guys, we'll have, as we always do, we will have everything that um, our uh, new friend uh, to refresh uh, and hopefully a contributor to refresh someday soon. Uh, but we will have um, the tips and the advice and the, uh, you know, the points that he has brought up. Um, two uh, quick things, Corey, before we let you jump. And thank you for working us into your schedule today. Oh, um, sleep. Yeah. Um, that's been a big thing, um, the, the sleep schedule. I know a lot of people have been talking about how their kids, they just, the, the kids have no concept of a sleep schedule right now. Um, I saw, I just saw someone, I'm co coming back to sleep in a second. Um, Trina Homebody, I have a habit of holding my breath without even realizing it. Mm. Let me tell you something, that right there is real. Yes. That is so real where you just realize I'm holding my breath or yeah. I'm, I'm clenched in my jaw or if I'm, I'm, you know, and you don't even realize it. So I, so she said she was going to try the 100 breath in 100 days um, because that is definitely what what is that about? Just a quick sidebar. What is that about? Just holding yeah. your breath and you realize, oh, shit, I could die. Wait a minute. What, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. what, what am I holding my breath for? What is that about? I, I think my best guess is it's just this unconscious uh, bracing against life and, Ooh. you know, all these all these moments throughout the day where mm -hmm. we're taking in a lot of stimulation and, and mm -hmm. we haven't evolved to be taking in this much stimulation. Um, and and in those moments, like you think of like a, a moment that you're scared or something happens that, uh, you know, jars your system, yeah. we're usually going to tense up like this and the well, hold our breath for a moment. We're having these like smaller versions of that throughout mm -hmm. the day. And then periodically we have a moment of awareness when we go, 
oh wow, my shoulders are up to my ears. Yes. My, my teeth are grinding uh -huh. and I'm not breathing. <laughs> so one thing I do is I actually carry around a, a little timer like this. This one's called Invisible Clock. I don't I have no stake in their company, but it goes off every um, every five minutes. It's just a vibration that I keep on my belt. And that vibration is just to, to tell me to like check in. Where am I right now? What's my mind doing? Are my shoulders tense? Wow. Um, and, and you could set an alarm on your phone to maybe go off once every hour. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of little things like that that just help us. It, because that's what all it is. It's just a practice yeah. of becoming more aware and then inviting the body to relax. Right, 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 right. Thank you for yeah. that. And y'all, you know, yes, we can definitely say there's so much going on with the virus, with quarantine. And then you add on top of that social unjust, uh, or so, social uh, injustice and the civil unrest. And there's just so much going on. On. Um, however, most of what we're talking about, if we're real, we've been dealing with some of this way before we, uh, we heard anything about a virus, Rona, uh, any of that. We have not really figured out how to really navigate through our stressful moments. I keep threatening to write a book, and I may have just found my <laughs> co-writer um, <laughs> called... Um, how it seems exactly somebody said i was tense before coronavirus exactly but i've been threatening to write a book called how to go through when you're going through oh that's great because i feel like thank you i'm sorry i didn't mean just glance over your compliment thank you <laughs> but i feel like we don't we we have to find tools for each of us you know we have to be able to um mm -hmm find those ways that we so that we win even in those moments not just when yeah. everything is is amazing that way we can get from the less amazing to the more amazing yeah um so back so so yes it, it seems like we, we definitely still could use that um so back to sleep mm. Um, yeah. and, and just, you know, with kids' schedules being all over the place, um, as we move into August, and for some, that means, you know, a whole new round of homeschooling. For mm -hmm. some, that means a, a continuation of um, remote workplace uh, from home. All of those things. Um, help, us, help us understand how we can do better with our sleep and yeah. do we still need to place value on sleep yeah yeah that that is something uh, more than anything i think that's where we need to place value just because it's it's the thing that allows us to show up fully and energy uh, energetically for mm -hmm. everything we actually need to do while we're awake um and and that is one of the first thing that seems to get compromised quality of mm -hmm. sleep yeah. So let, let's break three, sleep down into three categories. We have uh, winding down after the day, actually mm -hmm. falling asleep, and then falling back to sleep if you uh -huh. wake up. Uh -huh. uh, and I'll try and give a tip for each of those categories. Um, the first would be winding down after uh, a long day. This is where it's tough, especially if you have small children, if you have a lot of them, like the day doesn't wind down until they're in, in bed and then they could wake up before you even go. So it just gets complicated. But as best you can, trying to um, eliminate screen time uh, on your device and taking in a lot of stimulation through um, through media within about two hours before you go to sleep, just to give the brain the opportunity to settle down. <laughs> it's tough. I know. <laughs> and a lot of us are in a lot of us are in the habit of using uh, something like technology to sort of yeah. drown out the. Um, our thoughts. Yes. And it's not a great habit to be in. It might take a little bit of time, um, but usually what's going to happen Guilty. is, well, yeah, when you're <laughs> when you're not distracting yourself, you'll have to first meet everything that's going on in your mind. And so, just laying on the floor, even if it's for five minutes, mm -hmm. and just like letting your body let go. And you could say that for five minutes over. Take a deep breath, and then let go. And and you can't force the body to relax, but you can invite it to. And so it's starting to weave some of that, a few minutes of that here and there in the couple hours leading up to sleep is a really good start. Mm -hmm. Then when you're actually in bed, falling to sleep, what I would recommend is the four, seven, eight breath. 
So what this is, is a particular breathing pattern. Okay. You breathe in for four seconds and, and let's do it together. So I'll, okay. I'll explain it. You breathe in for four, hold for seven and exhale for eight seconds. Okay, so we'll, we'll all do it together. So okay. breathing in for four seconds, breathing in. One, two, three, four. Now hold for seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And exhale for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Good job. Now this can take a little bit of practice because it can be hard to elongate the exhale for eight seconds. Mm -hmm. So imagine to help do that, imagine that you're blowing hot air against a cold window like this, and then just close the mouth. It'll sound like this. That'll help you uh, constrict the airway a little bit and elongate that exhale. That elongated exhale will help settle the nervous system. Mm -hmm. So what I would suggest is try to do at least 15, four, seven, eight breaths while you're lying in bed. Okay. It is a great way to lower the heart rate mm -hmm. and settle in. You'll fall into deeper sleep faster, okay. um, which will make, uh, which will deepen the sleep over the course of the night. Okay. Now, the best laid plans, of course, you get to bed early, <laughs> as everything's going smoothly. Yes. Kids wake you up, the anxious thoughts wake you up. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, again, with small kids, some sometimes this is, uh, yeah, we don't have much control over this. So if you're if you have a really small child and you're you're soothing them to go back to sleep, mm -hmm. what I would suggest is use that as a time to do some walking meditation where you just treasure your time with them. And instead of being so caught up in oh, this is gonna ruin tomorrow, the next day, see it as a privileged opportunity and like I'm not gonna get this for the rest of my life. And so can I just be with my child right now? You take some steps back and forth in the room feeling each foot on the ground and really use it as an opportunity to connect. Mm -hmm. um, for those of us that are just like lying in bed, hating that we're awake in that moment and going, all right, now, you know, tomorrow's <laughs> going to be terrible. Work's going to be terrible. Right. Why can't I fall asleep? We add extra level of tension by being mad that we can't sleep. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is just to, to take it as a sign from your body or the sign from the universe or God or whatever mm -hmm. that, is, all right, I guess I'm going to be up in this moment. Yeah. And the, the worst thing we could do is be angry that we're up or fight yeah. that we're up. So, so let me pause you yeah. right quick right there. So you guys, I was listening to him on Asana Rebel. I was listening to Corey on a, on a sleep meditation. And it was one of those where I was up in the middle of the night. I had been asleep. And then I was awakened and I couldn't go back to sleep. And he, I, I had never thought of it this way. He gave me a totally new perspective on how to look at this. When he, I mean, I, I think I may have, that's when I first may have DM'd you like, hello, my name is Kim Fields. This is really me. I'm a huge fan because you just helped me put my sleep in perspective. Uh, but, but the idea of don't fight it, just say, okay, welcome this moment right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's such a subtle shift in relationship. But if we just think through it logically, what's the, the opposite of that is just going, oh, here we go again, not going to be able to fall asleep. And that is not doing anything. It's just mm -hmm. creating more tension in the body. So the first thing is just to meet it. It's like, okay, I'm awake right now. And maybe you read a book and not, you know, fiction book is a great way to resettle. But my, my suggestion is just you could come back to the four, seven, eight breathing, use it as an opportunity to meditate. We're always complaining, like, I don't have enough time to meditate during the day. Right. Well, here you go. You have at least a couple of minutes. <laughs> right, right. One hand on your belly, one hand on your heart, and just feel like, the gift of being alive in this moment. Feel your body breathing, feel your heart mm -hmm. beating. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe, maybe you do that for an hour. Awesome. You got an hour's worth of meditation meditation and before you fell asleep. Mm -hmm. One thing we see about meditation, it has similar restorative properties as sleep does. Mm -hmm. So even if you weren't sleeping, you were relaxing your system and getting a, a certain level of restoration. Yeah. But usually like that permission to just be again, where, where you are, where you just are. to breathe um, and not be so caught up in the thoughts does help us transition back into sleep a little mm. bit more. Mm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for this. This has been so fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. I know you guys have lots of questions for Corey. Uh, if you send us the questions over at Refresh by KF, 
we will definitely have more uh, chats with Corey, uh, of course, uh, on, on my story and on my timeline, as well as from Refresh's story and our feed. You can see Corey get his, uh, his platform information. Corey's got a website. Corey's got a podcast. Um, he's just so amazing. He, you, you really are. So, so thank you for this time. Um, oh, someone says you have a channel on YouTube where you can find 21 day meditation. Yeah, that's right. If you just type in 21 days of meditation on YouTube with Corey Mascara, um, I have a free 21 day meditation challenge. That's a great place to start for folks. Got it. Yeah. Got yeah. it. We will definitely make that a part of the refresh narrative. Uh, yeah. and again, that's Corey C O R Y mascara m as in mary u s a r a yeah m u s c a r a m u yeah that's that's what i wrote that's exactly <laughs> what i wrote <laughs> y'all don't listen to me and did i have coffee today <laughs> no <laughs> and we all know what happens when kim tries to operate without that uh, but thank you so much for this. This has been such a great conversation um, and certainly uh, the start of, of more, you know, um, in terms of being able to um, understand, um, understanding meditation, understanding to give yourself permission, understanding to um, not fight so much and beating yourself up and especially in those moments where you have an opportunity to do something different whether it's the kids are awake when they shouldn't be whether you're awake and, and you shouldn't be or you don't want to be so um everybody give it up for Corey mascara thank you so much honey safe thank travels you, to you and thank you. Uh, he will be back he will be back he yes. will be back <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much thanks kim thank you take care bye Oh my gosh, that was phenomenal. Wow, I'm just blown away. I'm so, I'm so excited. Um, don't leave yet because we've got one more guest coming up. Uh, she is a phenomenal uh, designer. Uh, she has been featured in Vogue magazine. Uh, she is a soaring visionary. Uh, and uh, she, she uh, had a wonderful quote recently. She said, self-care is a bridge to self-love. And I, I really enjoyed that. I, I really got a lot from that quote. Uh, and I will share the article that Vogue magazine did on her. Hey, Nicole Berman. Uh, Nicole Berman, as you guys have heard me say before, is a wonderful author. Uh, she will be joining us next month. While I wait for, we're going to be talking with Kendall Reynolds. So as soon as I see her come into the building, we will get her on. Uh, but I can tell you about next month at Refresh. Uh, next month, uh, we're all going to be talking about words. We're going to be talking about the power of words, the power of when other people's words land with you, your words with others, uh, words in terms of what we read, um, what, we, what we are putting into us in terms of words. Um, so we'll have some great articles, some great books. We're celebrating wonderful authors. And of course, Nicole Berman is one of the authors that we're going to be celebrating. Oh, she says she's here. Hey, hey, Kendall, I see you. Wait a minute. Wait, come back, come back, come back, come back. Uh, hi, Quincy. Hi. Hi. Yes, you may. Yes, you may. Yeah. Oh, careful, buddy. Okay. So that's going to be next month uh, for August uh, for Refresh. We're going to be talking about words. Uh, but now coming into the building, we are, are going to be thrilled and, and dazzled uh, with the one and only Kendall Reynolds. Uh, she is, uh, like I said, a tremendous designer. She is stunning. Uh, and I believe she's based out of one of my favorite cities, Chicago. Uh, and so... Um, somebody said words. When is it? W words is going to be the theme for refresh in August. So this month's this month's theme is still uh, soaring, S O A R I N G. And you know what, guys? You can definitely tag us uh, uh, if you've got a photo or an experience or anything where you're soaring. A few of my friends have shared with me uh, when they've been soaring, uh, and so I'll be sharing those. Okay, hold on. What happened here? Kendall, where'd you go, honey? Where'd you go? Nope. Um, okay, here we go. Hold on. View. Here we go. 
Here she comes. Here she comes. And look how fly she is. Look how fly she is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, see? Hello. <laughs> Hello, beauty. How are I you? I made it. I made it. You made it. How are you? I'm doing very well. It's a beautiful day in California today. You're here in Los Angeles too, right? I am. I thought you were in Chicago. You are in Kelly Cal. Yeah, I'm from Chicago, but I actually moved to LA because I went to USC. Oh, okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I went to Pepperdine. We can still be friends. Okay. Okay. <laughs> cute. Cute. All right. Well, welcome to a refreshing chat. We are thrilled to have you. Um, so guys, as I was saying, uh, Kendall is uh, just this wonderful designer um, and she has been featured in Vogue magazine. And what I appreciated is the um, spotlight that they did on, on the, the beauty that is all right here, right there. See all that beauty right there. Um, uh, what she was talking about natural hair and natural hair care in the in the midst of, of quarantine and, and things like that. But I wanted to start with you, uh, Sis, on your quote in your uh, Vogue article, uh, self-care is a bridge to self-love. Yeah. Yeah, can you, can you give us a little bit more meat on that bone, please, ma'am? So I really discovered the power of self-care early just because one, I was studying at the University of Southern California, USC, and I actually started my company my junior, my, between my junior and senior year. So my senior year was extremely hectic, building my business and also trying to get my degree at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it was in those super hectic, no time moments up all literally 24 hours of the day, mm -hmm. you know, school during the day, entrepreneurship at night yes lord <laughs> yes lord <laughs> i really learned the value of self-care mm -hmm. and and in that process it just brought me so much closer to myself and you know on that journey i was really reaching out and and stepping out on on my own vision my own ideas my own just my own creations, my own shoes, you know what I mean? That were yeah. designed from my heart and, and inspired by my life. And so, yeah, it was really in taking care of myself, making that, taking that mental space to really build out and, and strategize how I wanted, you know, my company to look, how I wanted my future to look. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it just really brought me closer to myself and it still is every mm -hmm. day, literally. So during that time frame where you are, you know, seemingly it feels like you're working, you know, a <laughs> hundred hours a day um, and you have your studies to maintain, you are a visionary to you're, you're trying to implement and execute a vision. Um, how, how, how did you find the time? How did you create? Cause it's not, you can't find the time. I think it's about you create those moments for yourself. Um, exactly. But how, how was that create the, the creation journey for you in that, in that space? Yeah, so it started small. Like, honestly, for me, I think the first couple steps were getting super consistent with exercising. So really hitting the gym, going hard, building that dream body that I wanted. And it was church every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So those two things, that's really where I started. And then after that, it was like, okay, I love food. Every meal has to hit hard. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that, that's been one of my most like saving grace self cares. Cause it's like, I can always have something to look forward to, you know, mm -hmm. like just as something as simple as a meal and just mm -hmm. like, what do I want my next meal to be? Like, it could be anything. Like, and, and I would just like, really just start small like that. And like, as my business started getting up and up and running, mm -hmm. I had this, um, like every time I would make a small accomplishment, I don't know if you have, if you're um, a chai, chai latte girl, yeah. but yeah. So Starbucks, I would walk my little happy butt to Starbucks after every small win, small win, <laughs> and treat myself to a soy chai latte. And I would just sit in the sun because I'm in California, girl. I'm in right, LA, right, right. Just bask in the sun. Yes. And that's my little treat. And it like, so it, start, it started small like that. Mm -hmm. And like now, obviously, it's, I take it way more seriously. I'm a yeah. lot more public facing. I have to be a lot more balanced, more stable. 
So now I, I literally schedule it in. Like, mm -hmm. I, if I have a blackout day for self care, nothing else is going on the schedule that day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I take that very seriously. Nice. But in the beginning, it was really those small things, you know, yep. church, exercise, yeah. the chai tea latte, yeah, the, the meals. And the, and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's like what Corey was saying earlier, you know, and as I said, too, when Boris was on last month, it seems like a kind of recurring theme is when you're starting something, you have to take baby steps. You know, yeah. you have to start small and take those smaller mm -hmm. steps. That's that's fantastic. So um, for those of you who may not know, um, Madam Queen Kendall here uh, is a fabulous uh, and phenomenal and quite prolific shoe designer. And so um, how did that come into your realm to when you talk about being uh, in, in college, you, you weren't you know, all the way for real in your grown womanness to know that no. you wanted to start that kind of business. How did that come about? Right. So really how it started was I followed my high school boyfriend from Chicago to Los Angeles. He went to Loyola Marymount. He was one year older than me. So he moved to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, now that's why I got to draw the line. Loyola and Loyola and Pepperdine, that's our rival. But continue. Oh, okay, so those are the rivals. Okay. <laughs> we was cool, but then you brought in Loyola. So on. Look, it didn't work out. It didn't work out with him anyway. Okay. So he's irrelevant. He's irrelevant. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I followed him out to Cali. Mm -hmm. We ended up breaking up after my first year. And I was sad, you know, it was heartbreak. I was depressed. I was, mm -hmm. you know, my family's in Chicago, so I'm all the way across the country. I have no one here. Yeah. You know, USC is like, you know, it's kind of weird, weird vibes going on on campus, especially for the black students. You know, there's not many of us. So there was no real sense of community. So mm -hmm. I was definitely going through all that heartbreak, mm -hmm. right? And so one day I just made the conscious decision to channel that negative energy into something creative. Mm -hmm. And in that process, I just started drawing more. Like I picked up a drawing class, like drawing 101 for an elective to get those credits. And I just ended up really being into sketching. And then one day I just woke up and I was like, let's sketch. I'm going to sketch some shoes today. And I literally realized I had so many ideas when it came to shoe design. And I kept sketching. I stuck with it. I stuck with it. And mm -hmm. My mom would come visit me like once a month because, you know, we from Chicago, so it's right. cold over there. She <laughs> right. she want the sun. Yeah. So she's popping up on campus. Mm -hmm. And so one time where she came to campus, we're sitting down for lunch and mm -hmm. I whip out my sketches and I'm like, mom, I, I really think I want to start a business. I want to start a luxury women's footwear company. I want to be the designer. Mm -hmm. I want you to help me build the business around it. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what I want to do after after school. And fast forward five years, my mom actually works for me. Um, she's our she's our like domestic sales director. She kills it. She crushes it. She sells more shoes than anyone else on the team. Wow. You know what I mean? She's an amazing <laughs> asset. I love having her. And and yeah. Wow. Wow. That's that's a, what is what a story. What a story. <laughs> my goodness. My goodness. So when it comes to being. Um, an entrepreneur, um, how do you navigate the concept of soaring? You know, how do you find ways to soar? And so, then, and, and then the, 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 the second part of that question would be, when you're not soaring, what you doing? And I don't mean it like a challenge, like, well, what you doing? I just mean like, well, my goodness, what, what do we do to, to get back to soaring? Right. Yeah. Um, and this is where it really comes down to just your attitude, right? Like when we're talking about entrepreneurship, so much of it is just such a mental game. Obviously, there are factors in real life that you just can't control. It's really just about how you can react and how you can you know, deal with the loss, deal with the win, bring a loss to a win, you know, keep a win so you don't, you know, dip back down to a loss. It's, it's all just such a mental game. Mm -hmm. And for me, it, it was really hard to soar at first because I felt like I just had this chip on my shoulder, right? Like just so many entrepreneurs do. We feel like, 
you know, we work around the clock. We feel like we deserve more recognition, right? More, <laughs> more quickly. You know, we deserve more sales, more money. We deserve Girl, more Girl, you ain't never lied. Yes. Exactly. That's, and that's entrepreneur 101 family. Yes. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. So like, obviously you're not soaring in that mindset. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're so focused on results that you're, you're, you're not soaring. You're, you have a ceiling above you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. your, your thoughts are capped. You're, you're limiting yourself and your potential by thinking that you need to be this and you need to be that and you need to be here by tomorrow. It's mm -hmm. like, no, you don't. And, mm -hmm. and so for me, learning to mm -hmm. soar and soaring was really just about accepting that this universe is so abundant and everything mm -hmm. that I'm supposed to have, everything that's meant for me will find mm -hmm. me. And so knowing that I can really detach myself from the end results and really just pour myself into the work. Because when you're looking at a company like mine, this was a passion project. I just told you guys how I got started. It right. stemmed from a breakup. I didn't go to fashion design school. I didn't right. grow up in Italy with factory heritage. Like, you know what I mean? I thought I was gonna go into finance. This whole shoot thing was a major pivot. I was studying business like i was gonna go work on wall street girl like right, i didn't right. know how i was gonna make money but i knew i wanted to make money that's okay? right that's right that's right wow. so i was gonna go with something safe so yes. you know really learning to soar for me was just about de detaching from from the end results and really just pouring my love pouring my passion mm -hmm. and focus on serving serving others that's why i'm in this business this is luxury footwear you know i'm here to give the girls what they want what they need right. to feel special mm -hmm. what's going to transform them on those special nights out you know what i'm saying so yes. learning to soar was really just about about letting go for me mm. oh i received that i received that i received that one as an entrepreneur um <clears throat> so yes detach thank you for putting that up there somebody quoted you detaching from the end result um and that's a difficult practice yes um that is that is a very uh unique mindset that is a very yes. unique lens to look through Absolutely. because uh when you are an entrepreneur and even if you're not if you don't have your own business like 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 Kendall and I do uh and some of you out there um even if you are in management even if you are um an employee somewhere whatever it may be you're almost you you're supposed to look at the end result well what's the goal what's the 3 year five And that's what year? everyone's asking too. Yes exactly. everyone around you is asking exactly. Exactly. And so to have the mindset of I'm going to detach myself from that, um, that way, number one, I can I can have the freedom. There's there's a yes. there's there's liberation. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. There's liberation in that because you're not you're, you're shifting what the focus is is oh that's good oh sis that is wonderful but not only are you shifting what the focus is you're shifting the focus to the things that you can control mm -hmm. which is the energy you're putting into the actual task yes you can't control the end result no matter yes. what you mm -hmm. can do everything perfectly and the end result still be trash yep you can't control that yeah yeah, yeah. all you can control is what you're giving to the actual project, right? Yeah. What you're giving to the actual company mm -hmm. on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute basis. Yeah, yeah. Someone commented that it's, it, it helps you focus even on the journey itself as opposed to the destination. Yes. Uh, when I'm acting, now shifted off of me as an entrepreneur with the coffee line, Signature Blends by KF, but, <laughs> uh, but with the coffee line, um, that is, you know, phenomenal advice because you, you do focus on what are we going to do next month? What do we, you know, destination oriented mm -hmm. and, 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 and long term. Uh, but now shift to me as an actor. And even when I'm directing others, like I've done tonight, uh, <laughs> like I got to get all the plugs in right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> Yes, the movie comes on at nine o'clock this evening on BET Her. It's called Baby Blue. It's a part of an initiative called The Couch. Um, okay. But the bottom line is you can't focus so much on, on where you're trying to go emotionally or remembering the lines or what my movement is because then it takes you out of, watch this family, the moment. Yeah. And, and, and what you're saying, picking up and looking through that lens 
helps you really recognize to be present. Yes. And to be in the moment. Absolutely. And that energy within you mm -hmm. has, has ripple effects outside of you. You know what I mean? Because being in that moment, those are the types of energy, like you, that's the type of energy you need to be living in to attract the things that are meant to be attracted to. Yeah. 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 Like yeah. even from mentorship to guidance, to new customers, to new partnership opportunities, like if you're focused on here and you're not living right here, yes. you're going to miss that. You're going to yeah. miss those things because mm -hmm. sometimes it's really subtle. It's not, yeah. uh, hey, Kendall, I'm here to help you and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes it's literally just a smile from across the room from someone you Googled and knew you had to meet. And that was yeah. your, that's your moment to go over there and walk up to them. And from there, boom. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's just so important to just yeah. allow yourself to be.